Father, we just open up our hearts today. We want the Word of God to come into us. We just don't want to be hearers of the Word, but we want to be doers of the Word. We want to, we want to know what you're saying today, so help us, Father, as, as we listen to the Word this morning, as, as we partake of it. And, and Lord, I, I pray that our eyes would be open, the ears would be open, the hearts open, and Lord, that we would see a move of the Spirit begin to work in our own lives, and for that we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And, G, and everybody said, Amen. You know, in Luke 18, verse 8, it says, When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? You know, I have a, you know, as a pastor, I've been a pastor now for many, many years, and many, sometimes on altars, people walk up to me and they'll, they'll say, uh, I say, What do you need? They say, I want more faith. And they want you to pray for faith. I can pray for you all day. That will not affect your faith. Will not touch your faith, amen. But the thing is that God wants to build faith in our lives. How many people believe that God wants to do something in your life today? You know, how many people, you know, have you come expectingly? And so, what I want to share a little bit this morning, we've been talking a lot about the inward man, the outward man. We've got an inward man that's being renewed day by day, we've got an outward man that is perishing. Tom was talking about that outward man that when it's time to go for prayer, the old outward man says, you don't need to go tonight. You can have a little rest. You're tired, aren't you? You've had a bad day. You've had a big day today. And Anybody ever had this conversation? And, and, and you, you talk yourself and in, 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 in allowing what the devil wants you to hear to come in and stop you from doing things. So we've been talking a lot about that sort of thing. And, and I want to speak a little bit this morning about how to build faith in your life. How faith is built. See, fasting and prayer does not build faith. You can fast, you'll get, you'll get very thin, but it will not build faith. Fasting will bring your flesh into line. It, it'll bring your flesh, and that's a good thing. Prayer builds a relationship with our Lord. But you see, God knows every one of your needs before you even ask. So prayer really doesn't build faith. It builds a relationship with God. And men, we need that relationship with God, don't we? We need to have that communication with him. That's very, very important. Uh, Tom was talking about he was reading stories about Catherine Kuhlman, reading books about faith and about men and women of faith and all that they've done, all the great things will stir your heart, will excite you, but it won't build faith in your life. It'll encourage you. It'll stir you. You see, the Word of God alone is the source of faith. The Word of God. We've got to get the Word of God. It says, the Word of God says in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and the Word of God. Friend, if ever there's a time in the history of humanity when we want faith, when we need faith in our lives, it's today, ain't it? People are scared to get on buses. They're scared to go here. They're scared to do this. Somehow or other, we've got to build faith. When the Word becomes part of us, when the, when the Word of God gets inside of us, when, when it's not just, just a, a passage of Scripture, when it's not just a, something that you put on your mirror, when it's not just something that you put on the bumper of your car, when it's not something there that you just say, but when the Word of God gets inside of you, when it gets inside of you, that's when it becomes real to us, and that's when it becomes faith, faith, faith. In John 15, verse 7, it says this, If you abide in me, and my Word abides in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Let me read this again. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. If this book abides in you, if it lives in you, if it gets inside of you, if, if when a situation arises, you don't see that, you see this, amen? You don't see what the enemy wants you to see, you see what the Word of God says. And out of your innermost being, all of a sudden, something starts to rise up. Jesus talks about this inner man, talks about the spirit man that wants to rise up on the inside of you. So when somebody says to you or, or a doctor says to you, you're not going to make it, you're, you're, you're going to die or this is going to happen to you, 
and, and you hear those words, that, that's what you hear. But you see, when the Word of God abides in you, something there, when you hear these words, something springs up and out of your innermost being flows rivers of death, no, rivers of living water. Living water that will overcome, that will triumph over, that will pull down, that will destroy the negatives that the enemy wants to plant in your life. You see, God has already built inside of every believer. There's that void, there's that place there that if you fill it with the Word of God, if you fill it with the anointing, if you fill it with, with what God says about you, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. The Word of God will rise up within you and say, no, 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 by the hair of my chinny, chin, chin, that is not what's going to happen to me. Is that okay to talk like that? We've got to rise up. We've got to put on a different clothing. We've got to put on different armor. But you see, if my word abides, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. In other words, it's saying that my word will eat up the negativity. My word will destroy the unbelief that's in your heart. My word will overcome because my word is alive and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. I hope you believe that today. When we begin to realize that we are part of Him. See, when I got born again, I became part of Him. I became part of Him as a branch, as a part of a vine. I've got to see myself attached. I'm not a branch out here waving around doing my own thing. I am attached. I've got to be attached. And the way I get attached is through the Word of God. And when I realize that we are a part of Him as a branch is part of a vine and that Jesus is part of us as the vine is part of the branch. You see, you cannot disconnect us. You, you cannot be disconnected. The only thing that can stop the Word of God from working in your life is unbelief, is hardness of heart, is, is negativity, failure, stuff that gets on the inside of us that will pull us down. But right now I'm part of the vine, are you? You see, when you're attached, when, when you're connected, when, 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 when you realize that, then you, you realize that we have the life, we have his life, we have his ability, we have his love, we have his strength flowing into us, not just flowing into me, but flowing through me. When it's hard to love somebody, when it's hard, hard to forgive somebody or to do this or that, if we can somehow or other grab hold of God's love and say, God, today I need your love to flow through me. I need your love to come into me and I need your love to flow through me. God, today I need your strength. Anybody need God's strength? God, I need your strength to flow into me, but not only flowing into me, but flowing through me. I today want to portray strength to you people here today. I want to be able to be an example of what God can do in a human life. I, and that's what, as Christians, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to go into all the world and be an example, to carry the mantle, to carry the anointing, to carry the victory of the cross of Calvary. That when we come with our mates and with our friends or whatever it might be, or, or people that we work with, they'll see a, a something in us. You see, the disciples, when they're on the planet, and they were working there, and the, and, the, and the magistrates and the learned people and everybody else, they saw these disciples, but they found it very, very difficult to believe what they were saying about Jesus, what they were saying about the resurrection, what they were saying. But what they said in their mind is because they way, the way they carried themselves, because God himself was flowing into them and through them, they said, we cannot dispute this. We're looking at these people. They are unlearned people. It is obvious that they have been with God. Amen. Why? Because you see, when you when you sing that Tom was talking about with communion and, and the things that we carry, when you've been there, you act differently. Oh yeah, I haven't been into a into a uh, in, into an airport yet where where people fall under the power of God <laughs> like that. 
but I have been in meetings where people have got their hearts open and I've raised my hands and I've seen hundreds of people fall under the power of God. And it's not, it's, it's, you see, God doesn't want to just, you know, tickle our thinking and that. He wants to flow into us and he wants to flow through us. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you believe me, if you trust me, when you understand who you are, when you understand what, you know, that connection that we have with God, when you understand that a negativity and failure and defeat is swallowed up with the victory of the cross of Calvary, then you shall ask me whatever you want and you shall receive it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I think that's where the clap. Amen. How many people want to... Ooh, bundi, I'll just leave that to later on. I, I just want a move of God. Eh? We have His life. I have His ability. I have His love. I have His strength flowing into me and through me. Amen. Why don't you lift up your hands this morning and say, Come on, Lord, flow through me this morning. Flow into me this morning. Flow through me this morning. Touch me this morning, Lord. I need your touch. See, I, I grow tomatoes. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny, you know, when people come to my house, I, I, I take them out there and show them my tomatoes. <laughs> Some say tomatoes. But I show them my tomatoes. But you see, when storms and rain come, some of the branches get twisted and, and, and bent over. And when they get bent over, the life that is in that bush is cut off to a degree. And I notice there that, that it, it's starting to wither a bit. So what I do is I go out there and I lift them up again to open it up and I tie them to the trellis so that the flow can come again. I don't know about you, but as, as a human, I need God to tie me to the trellis. Hallelujah. <laughs> I need God to lift up those areas that are bent over. Amen. Where, where the enemy comes in. Where, look, friend, we're all human here. It would be silly to say to you today that the enemy doesn't come and attack us. That it doesn't come and try to bring negativity and failure and goodness knows what on us. But I want to tell you this, friend that if you let the Holy Ghost into your life, because he, he wants to flow through you, amen. He wants, you know, as, and, and, and he wants to bear great fruit in your life. You've got to go out there and straighten it, because there's a lot of things that have happened that stop the flow of God in our lives. See, the church has to have the flow of God flowing through it. You can build great churches on hype and on different things. You can, you can build on a lot of things that God said, I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build it my way. And how I'm going to build it is I want to flow into my church. I want to flow into my people with my power. And that power is going to flow into them and it's going to flow through them. And when you go into the highways and the byways and wherever you go, as you carry that anointing, as you carry that mantle, people's lives will be challenged and, and changed forever. Amen. See, friend, we need to let the vine dresser, who knows who he is, do his work in our lives. Understanding how to build faith in our lives is, is understanding that I'm plugged in, that, that God wants to do things. It's got nothing... Oh, yes, it has got a lot to do with me if I open the door. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open the door, I will come in. That's our responsibility to open the door, to let the flow come into our lives. We've got to understand that. How do I, how do I build this faith then? How do I... Build this faith. The Bible says faith is an assurance, an inward conviction that God's word, whatever God's word says is true. I believe that this book is true. It's not a book of fables. It is true. It is truth. Whatever God says will come to pass. 
whatever God has said in this book will come to pass. We read many, many times when, when things were spoken in the Old Testament as now coming to pass in days that we're living in. The new is in the old concealed. The old is in the new revealed. Reality is truth. Whatever God says, He can do, He will do. Amen. And even more than you and I could ever imagine or think. Faith is an assurance, an inward conviction coming from that inward man that out of our belly, our innermost being will flow rivers of living water. An assurance, an inward conviction that what God's Word says is true and I can trust Him to bring it to pass. You know, sometimes you've had prophetic words over your life. And we read them sometimes and we say, oh my God. But if we can only believe, all things are possible. Amen. The Amplified Bible says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of the things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith is an assurance confirmation or the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. If God's Word says it, it's going to happen. God says there's going to be a latter rain revival. God said, I'm going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. He said, I'm coming back for a powerful church. I'm coming back for my people. I'm coming back. Noah built an ark. Before he even saw any rain at all, even a cloud. Why did he do that? Because God told him. Jesus acted on his Father's word. He did what his Father told him to do. He won amazing victory. Jesus acted in faith unconsciously. And I believe that that's where God wants to bring us. See, when, when the Word of God gets inside you, 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 don't, have to, you don't have to get there and, and somewhere or other say, I, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh God, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. You don't have to go through some contortionist act or something like that to, to try to, to get through. I believe that God, when the Word of God gets inside of us and we believe what the Word of God says about us, when trials and tribulations come, we will act unconsciously. That our, that res oh my goodness. That's why I got a big belly. I just got a revelation. It's a reservoir. Don't you ever say, I've got a big belly? Say, man, you got a big reservoir. <laughs> Tom, we got reservoirs, hallelujah. Shakabundi, that's worth rejoicing about, amen. Oh, man, I've been trying to get rid of this belly. Oh, I'm going to build it up more, Nancy. I'm going to have two, I'm going to have two of those chocolates. You see, you, when the word you build, it builds up and out of that reservoir. Everybody say reservoir. Out of that reservoir, when it comes, out of that reservoir, something springs up unconsciously. What I was saying before, the doctor says this and that. You say, no, I don't accept that. I, I've got to say it again. I was in the, in, with Jenny and Keith in the, at, their, at their house when their daughter had a, had a major um, asthma attack. And the doctors were there and I was there. I felt as useless as an ashtray on a motorcycle. Because <laughs> there's this kid gasping for breath. The doctors were there. And, and, and you'd go in and you'd do the best you can. You lay hands on them and, and you pray and you believe God. And, and, and you're doing whatever you can. 
And, and after a little while, I, I came out and, and I was talking to Jenny and Keith and, and the doctor was in there doing whatever he does and, and he walked out and he said, she's gone. She's gone. But <laughs> out of that reservoir, amen? Out of that reservoir. Where did that come from, Jenny? Where did that come from? Out of that reservoir, she yelled at the top of her voice, No! She yelled it out, No! Like when the doctor says she's dead. Well, you say, Okay, no. She yelled out out of that reservoir, No! The doctor ran back into the room and he came back and he said, She's alive! <laughs> Is that true? Is that a true story? No? Eh? True story? Pretty close. <laughs> For me to hear those words, pretty close, that's good. But talk to... It's true, it's true, it's true. No, 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 no. See, when you build... There, it, it, it comes out unconsciously. And Jesus just did it. He just did it. Faith is built in us by the Word being built in us. You build the Word in us. You build, you build the Word in yourself. And then faith grows by acting upon it. No good, no good, you know, so, you know, quoting scriptures and, and, and their blah, 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 and, and, and then, then somebody comes up to you and says such and such, you say, oh, okay. No, you've got to act on it. No! No! You act on it. You've got you to start pushing back some of those negative thoughts. You've got to start pushing back some of that stuff. Faith is built in us by using the Word of God and acting upon it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God again in Romans 10, uh, 17. In John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. I want to tell you, that's pretty plain. I am the vine, you are the branches. I'm connected in there, but without that connection, I can do nothing. I'm just a clanging symbol. I'm just, a, I'm just nothing. I'm a nobody. Nothing. I am the vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. It's not just a one-way street. I abide in him and he abides in me. He is my source. He is my strength. See, the, the reality of the indwelling of the Lord God is, is so important, the reality of that indwelling. I've got to understand that He indwells me. God in me, the hope of glory. On the day of Pentecost, certain things started to happen in that upper room. I'm not going to read it because we all know this, this verses of Scripture so well. And it will happen to you if you can only believe. If, you, if somewhere or other we can, we can get it into our lives. It says, Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. The disciples were immersed in the Holy Spirit. They, how, do, how do I explain this? There was a phenomena that happened. Tom was talking today about, about the prayer meeting and coming into the prayer meeting and, and, and beginning to worship and just beginning to pray and, and, and you come into the atmosphere. What happens is that God immerses us. God's presence comes in. God's presence, He just doesn't come in to make you feel good. He, he immerses. I was immersed. I was saturated. You were, you were saturated in the Holy Spirit. 
When they were immersed, they received eternal life and were made new creations with a new nature, a divine nature. The New Testament or the New Covenant Church was birthed. So when, I, when the Holy Spirit came upon my life, I was immersed. You were immersed with the Holy Spirit. Eternal life came into me. I was totally transformed, totally changed. I've said it many, many times. We, we watch sometimes people coming out the front and we don't understand what's going on in the realm of the Spirit. We've got to understand what's going on in the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. This morning, you're not just sitting here listening to some old fella bashing his gums together. I've, I've been praying and I've been believing God for the anointing to come and touch you, to, to minister to you the same as he's ministering to me. This is doing me good. I, this is who I am. This is who you are. I'm immersed with the power of God. I, I, I became a new creature. I became a new creation. I was birthed. I was born again. The second thing that happened was tongues of fire sat on each of them. Oh, friend. Tongues of fire sat on each of them. This, this morning... You see, God wants to bring tongues of fire to sit upon you, amen. Tongues of fire sat upon them. Now, what an amazing thing. Uh, like we read it and we read it through, but, but man, what did the tongues of fire do to him? What happened? You see, the second thing that happened, tongues of fire sat on each of them. The church, church of the day needs to have tongues of fire, amen. Anybody here need tongues of fire? Go and give the Lord a wave. Say, hey, Lord, I need tongues of fire. Hallelujah. I need a bit of fire in my belly. I need tongues of fire to come on me. This is the fire we need to preach the gospel. We need the anointing. We need the fire of God on what we say. We need conviction. Friend, if I don't believe what I'm saying today, man, oh. But I believe that this word is the word of God. Amen. It is the truth. And I believe that God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. Do you believe that? He wants to do that sort of thing. They had to kill Stephen to get rid of the tongue of fire that was on him. <laughs> they wanted to kill him. They wanted to do that. And he just kept preaching. He kept the fire of God. And you see what the fire of God does, it brings conviction. The fire of God. Man, I, I want the fire of God on me. God, tongues of fire, tongues of fire, hallelujah. That'll cause the devils to cringe. God, tongues of fire, tongues of fire. I can feel it coming. <laughs> Tongues of fire. The third thing that happened, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They received the power of God. They received the power of God. The third thing, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Not just a trickle. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just don't want to sprinkle. I want to be filled. I want to be immersed. I want to be saturated. I want to be impregnated. I want to have tongues of fire on me. I... Fire of God. The fourth thing that happened is they all spoke in tongues. He's getting a lot better. Usually he goes a lot earlier. It's getting a lot better. Let's pray for him, Father. Touch him, touch him, touch him. He needs you, Jesus. He's obviously a very disturbed young man. Cry out to him, Father, that fire would touch him. Heal him, deliver him, set him free in Jesus' name. The fourth thing that happened is they all spoke in tongues. They all spoke in tongues. Shakabundi, yara barandi, nuki shalabundu. Been speaking in tongues lately? Need to speak in tongues every moment you can. We Pentecostals make a great deal of receiving the Holy Spirit, but in general have ignored the fact that He lives and indwells in me. It's 
not just speaking in tongues, but they all spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit, we've ignored the fact that He now indwells inside me. He lives in me. 1 John 4, 4 says this. It, see, it says, you are God, God you, sorry, you are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because He who is in you not you on your own. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Not Neil, but he who is in me. Amen? He who is in me, this reservoir that I have on the inside of me, Philippians 2.13 says, it is, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for His good pleasure. It's God who dwells in us. I want to read something to you very, very quickly as I close this morning. This is something that I wrote some time ago. I gave it to a couple of people, uh, but they haven't really got back to me. <laughs> Because I don't think I should have given it in that sense to them. I should have given it. I've read it to you before. But I'm not a poet. I don't do poetry. I've never done poetry. You ask Nancy. I've been married to her for now 60, how many years? Six, nearly 62 years. And I've never written her a poem. A poem. Never, never left a poem on your today. So I don't know poems. I can feel the Holy Ghost coming on. I think I might be getting a little bit intoxicated here. Because I've been crying out to God, amen? I've been crying out to God. This is what I wrote. Come, mighty fire, burn in me again. Come, Light the fire and live in me again. Come, wind of God, and breathe on me again. Come, come, come. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Come, come, come. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost rain, Holy Ghost power, fall on me again. Let the river flow. Let the arm of God be seen. Let the church rise in the knowledge of our King. Come, come, come. Come to Him again. He will empower you to do His work again. Come, just come, just come. Surrender to His will, just come. Jesus, our Redeemer, says come. He will empower you to do his work again. Just come. The river is rising. The banks will overflow. No one can stop it. It's touching everyone. Just come. Just come. I want to invite you to, this morning to come to the river. Come to the river of God. Come to the river. I don't know what your interpretation of the river is, but I believe that this is the river. <laughs> come to the truth. Come to the Word of God. There may, there may be other interpretations of the river, but come to the river. Let's just stand to our feet this morning. If that this morning has spoken to your life at all, and you want to burn again for Jesus, you want tongues of fire to come upon your head again, you want God to touch you afresh. I want you to come. Would you come this morning? Would you just come? Would you just let him touch you afresh? Just come. Just come. Father, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I come to you this morning, Lord, but I lift up my heart. I lift up my heart.
And I ask you to fill me afresh with your presence. Just come. Just come. Others, if you'd like to come, come now. Come now and let's believe God with you this morning. Let's believe God to touch you. I want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want the presence of the living God to touch me. I just want to come. I just want to come, Lord. I want to come. I don't want to be put off by the negatives of life. I, I, don't, I don't want to be subdued by the enemy. I want to come and be touched again. I want the anointing to flow over my life. I want to be an influence in my community, in this, in this area. Wherever I go, Lord, I want to be a carrier of your mantle. I want to be a carrier of your anointing. God, you want to touch people. You want to meet with people. You want to meet with us. Just come. Just come. Just come. The river is flowing. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop it. Just come. That's all you've got to do. You just open yourself. Coming opens yourself to the things of God. Surrendering opens yourself to the things of God. Father, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory for these people, my God, that have come. I pray, Father, for the mantle to rest upon each and every one of them. Lord, that we will be that influence into our community wherever we go. Wherever we go, whoever we talk to, wherever we are, we realize, Lord, that, that you want to flow not only into us, but you want to flow through us. You just don't want to flow in. That's good, but you want to flow through us. Father, we'll be careful to give you all the praise. We'll be careful to give you all the glory. We'll be careful to give you all the honor. So, Father, we just pray right now. We pray for these people. We lift them up before you in Jesus' name.